In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to create these icon buttons right here using HTML and CSS. Now, it is very easy to create these buttons right here and use them on your website. It takes about uh, 25 to 30 lines of CSS. So jumping into this tab right here, we're gonna be beginning from scratch to create what I just showed you. And it's worth mentioning that we're gonna be using Google material symbols to get the icons to display within the button. Now, this right here is gonna be linked down below and it is a simple icon library so you can use icons on your website. Now, going back inside this tab right here, let's go inside uh, VS Code, which currently looks like this. So the first step is gonna be to define the HTML markup for the button. So we can say button just like this and make sure to give this a type of button if it's gonna be a general purpose button. Um, but if you're using this as part of a form submit, then you simply change it to be a type of submit. Now, it's also important to give this a class of button just like that. And this class is gonna be used to add the styles with CSS. And within the button itself, we're gonna have a couple of elements. The first one is gonna be the icon itself. And the second is going to be the text on the button. So let's begin with the text by using a simple span. And let's just say, save changes as the text. Uh, saving this and go back in the browser, we get something like this, right? So now how do we use the material symbols library to display a save icon near the button? Well, you can simply do a search for something such as save right up here, and you'll see all the icons that relate to save. Now, we wanna use this one right here. So you wanna click the icon itself, and if you want, you could also choose to use um, under filters, you can choose to use the fill option if you like that better. In fact, I might actually use that myself. So I'll click the save icon once again. And on the right side, you're gonna see a bunch of instructions for how to use it. Now scroll down to the static icon font. This right here is the simplest um, installation for the icon library. I'm gonna simply copy this here, go back in the HTML and just paste it within your head just like this and now we can use all the icons on the website. And if we save and go back in the browser, just to further explore this page here, you can see it says inserting the icon and it says you simply use a span uh, and then put save inside of that. So I'll copy this once again, go back in VS Code this time, paste it within the button itself, just like this. And I'll remove all of this and go back to a single line. And that is all you need to do to use these icons. I'll save this, go back in the browser, inside the tab, and you get this right here. So now we are done with the HTML for the button. Let's move forward to the CSS to of course make this here look like this here. So going back inside VS Code, let's jump into um, the head and just make a new style tag. Of course, you can use a CSS external style sheet if you like, but I'm gonna use a style tag here. Now, let's begin by targeting the class of button. So for the main button, we're gonna be doing a couple of things here. We're gonna say, firstly, a display of inline flex, okay? as well as an align items of center. Now, this right here, if I save it, you'll see that the label or the text has now been aligned vertically with the icon. So that is the point of using flex and the align items of center here, okay? Let's also move forward to the gap and make this six pixels, okay? Now, this is going to, if I save it, it's going to create a gap here between the save icon and the label, of course. Now, going back inside here, we can move forward to the background color and the text color. So the way this is going to work is we're gonna be using CSS variables to insert these colors. And you'll see why very shortly. But let's go up here and we're going to say dash dash button dash color and set this to be triple three, just like this for a dark gray. Let's do the exact same thing for the background itself and set this to be uh, triple D just like that. And then we go, uh, we're, we're gonna also say background dash hover and make this a triple C. 
Now, all this is doing, if you're not familiar with CSS variables, all this is doing is saying that the variable button color is going to refer to this color here. And you can use these variables within your CSS, um, which we're going to do right now. So let's say background equal to var, then uh, dash dash button uh, background just like that and do the exact same thing for the color. So button dash color as the var. We can save this, go back inside the browser and you can see that the background color and the foreground text color have been applied. And once again, I'm gonna be showing you very shortly um, why we chose to use CSS variables here as opposed to standard uh, values. But moving on, we have the outline uh, we can set this to be none and a border of none as well. We can also apply a border radius here to be four pixels and also a font family. I'm going to use the Lexend font and then fall back to a sans serif, of course, um, completely up to you. I'm also going to use a font weight of 600 here and a font size of 14 pixels. I'll save this, go back in the browser and we get this right here. So now we can move forward to uh, some padding and the, uh, the cursor itself. So going back in here, let's apply some padding. We're going to say six pixels for the top and bottom and 12 pixels for the left and right and a cursor of pointer. That way the user knows that this button is clickable when hovering over. Save this back in the browser and we get this right here. Okay. So it's currently looking pretty good. Um, we now need to apply a few more styles for the hover state. So you may have seen that I declared a third variable here for the background hover. This is gonna be the color which gets used when the user hovers over the button or clicks on the button. So let's jump down here and say button uh, colon hover and also button colon active. So for the hover and active states, we're just going to say background here, set it to be var and then of course dash dash background hover just like that. Save this back in the browser, hover over the button and the background color changes. So we are now done for the majority of the HTML and CSS for these buttons. But as you would have seen earlier, I've got different styles and different colors being applied to these ones here. Of course, a green success and a, um, a red error. Okay, so this can be done using some CSS modifier classes and this is where those CSS variables are going to come in handy. So let's jump down to the button and just give this a class of button dash success on top of the existing button. So the button class is responsible for everything to do with the structure, the way it looks, etc. And the button success, like I said, is a modifier class, which means that it modifies, um, you know, certain uh, properties. In this case here, it's gonna be the variable. So we're gonna change the colors of these values here. So going down here, we can now say button dash success. I'm just going to copy and paste what I've got in my example, which is all of these colors right here. So we can see that we are simply overriding the CSS variables with some new values. And because we've used those variables throughout the code, it's simply going to work and use the new updated value. So you're overriding that um, uh, those those values, right? So if I save this, go back in the browser, we have this right here. Hovering over gives us the darker background as well. So what is the purpose of using your CSS variables as opposed to just, um, you know, re, re declaring the background as, you know, a dark green, for example. So why use variables as opposed to using the, spe the specific property? Well, the answer is, for uh, greater reusability when it comes to the values themselves. Let's say you want to use the background color for multiple things and not just the background. Let's say you wanna have some sort of box shadow behind the button that uses the same color as the background. Well, if that's the case, you must define a background property and a box shadow property in both the the main class and the modifier class. But 
by only using variables down here, especially for things like colors and font sizing, etc., you can really let your base class focus just on which property does what. And of course, leave the modifications to the modifier classes. So it's a bit of a separation of concerns there. And it's also got a bonus of reusability in that you can use the same value for multiple things. So that is how to create your icon buttons using HTML and CSS. If this video helped you out, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next video.